We're in first grade. What'd you say we are, John? Colossians. We are in Colossians chapter three. That's what I thought. That's what I thought you said. Yes. Last week we were in Colossians chapter three. So we're going to continue that. We moved ahead three verses. Yeah. So we're going to start in verse. Uh, you know what? I, I'm I'm feeling like I should read some more today. So let's let's reread some of what we went over last week. Uh, Dad, would you mind reading verses uh, five through seven, and then Mr. Edwards, would you read verses uh, eight through eleven? <clears throat> okay, five through seven. <clears throat> Therefore, put to death your old members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetedness, which is idolatry. Because these things, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived with them. But now you also put off all these anger wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, or excuse me, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor three, but Christ is all and in all. Amen. All right. Amen. I think that means we're done. I guess we'll just. I think, I think it means repeat, doesn't it? Amen means repeat, right? Somebody knows good. All right. So we, we're starting today in. Sorry, I, I'm still a little tired, so a little crazy. You have to forgive me for that. We are still, we're in verse eight. Um, sorry, again, my, my cat is trying to get into a bag, distracting me. Um, so we're in verse eight, and, and it says something really interesting here. He said, uh, we talked about verses five through seven last week, where Tim went through it, and uh, we went through all of the that list, that fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, uh, which is idolatry, and so we we went through there and that was really interesting he says he starts there's a big difference between verse five and eight and i want us to see that and it says in verse five put to death your members and then he has this list and in verse eight he says but now you are to put off all these and then we have this list so um i, I just want to point out here that we have this difference here between put to death your members and put off and, and and put off is just like it says, put it off, cast it off, take it off. You know, it's got that idea of taking something off or or casting it off and putting it aside. Good morning, Elijah. And so uh, and so we have that idea here in verse eight that we're going to go through. And that seems to me to be very different than put to death. What do you think is the difference between putting to death these this list? versus casting aside this list i think the putting to death is the one that you don't do ever again where the one is you cast aside until it's <clears throat> i guess called upon and you need to okay i like that that's interesting well the, the first list is uh, idolatry in other words these are things that you put before god and all of these other things so that's the idolatry part the second list is things that comes out of yourself, which is anger, wrath, all these other things. So it's it's you put to death idolatry, but now you got to work on yourself a little bit. You got to put aside these things, which is the hard part. Yeah, um, it's easy to recognize idolatry when somebody points it out, but it's not easy when you're showing anger or you come you're quick to anger and slow to listen, as James would say. So it's it, that's the difference between the two lists is now you're working on yourself where the other ones are don't even do these things. Mm -hmm. 
Any other thoughts? I I had to look up the word malice, what it meant. It's not a word mm. I use very often. So oh, well, that's good. Uh, it's a intention or desire to do evil. Yeah, that, that you're wishing bad on someone, and we'll we'll get over we'll get all over each of the words uh, shortly. But yeah, that's it's a good word. We have malice often when we don't even realize it. Um, but that's true. But okay, so so we're talking about the difference right now between putting to death and uh, sorry, man, my cat is just distracting me. Really fighting to get into a bag. <clears throat> uh, sure, you didn't put it in the bag. <laughs> the cat's in the bag. Well, yeah, I was gonna say, is, right. is the cat out of the bag or is the cat in the bag? You know, we gotta watch that. <laughs> Once quick the cat's there. out of the bag, we're in trouble. That's right. right. Um. So uh, I, I like both what John and uh, Sean said about those things. One of the things, uh, another thing that I think of when I hear of put to death, um, when you, the difference between the put to death and the cast it off, when you put to death something, it sounds like it's fighting back. It sounds to me like you've really got to fight at this. And, and I think that's part of what, like what Sean was saying with the idolatry is this is something that's fighting for your heart. You know, it wants you to serve it. It wants it to be your consuming passion and it fights back. And it's one of the, and, and that list of things, those are those things that it's almost like you can become a slave to it and, and you 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 really have to beat it down. You have to put it to death because it wants to come back. And the other one is a little bit different. It's cast off, you know, you just, you take it off and you put it away and you may find yourself wrapped up in it again, but you just take it off and it's not necessarily fighting back. You're actually putting it on uh, yourself. And so I, I, that's that's one of those differences that I saw as, we, as I was going through this too. It's really interesting because what we're going to hit through these verses is is bunch a bunch of lists that Paul's uh, bringing up, and I like the different phrases that he uses to describe the list that he's going to go through. So, uh, and also before we get through here, <clears throat> I just wanted to point out another thing, and that's in verse seven. It says, uh, verse seven says, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. And again, this is that putting to death uh, thing. And, and we're going to see Paul talk about this new man and old man idea. And there's this idea here that, and it's not just an idea. It's not, it's not a metaphorical. It, it's reality that we were a different person. We were an old person, slave to sin before Christ. And then once we met Christ, we're no longer a slave to him. Now we serve him. Now we serve Jesus. And so there's this idea here between an old man and a new man. That old man is the one that was a slave to sin and where the new man is the slave to Christ. And maybe we don't like the phrasing of that, but that's that's what it is, right? We are, we are um, following him, submitting to him. And so there's this contrast between these two that Paul's going to bring up. So I like all this. So we'll start going through the list now. And the first one in that list is anger. It seems to me that, that we have anger, wrath, and malice. And those three are very similar. Mm -hmm. um, we have anger, which is this idea of this violent passion. And we have wrath, which is this angry heat that you could have. Mm -hmm. And then we have malice, which is this anger where you actually wish bad on someone mm. and so we have these three sides of anger and i'm sure that there have been times when you might have felt all three of those at once um but but uh often i i think we don't right we can be we can be angry about something mm -hmm. and uh you know really want to throw punches or we could be angry at something where we're just like, oh, man, I hate that. And then there's this other idea of where I could be angry at something. And this is where where uh, Jody was talking about malice, where you just wish bad on somebody. You're just like, oh, man, I hope they get what they deserve. And even just that, even that I hope they get what they deserve, that's malice. That's like I'm wishing bad 
on another another person. Mm. And that one, I think, is one of those that we have to be careful on because uh, we can, you know, we can think of something as that's not really that big of a deal. Like, you know, maybe there's a politician that you don't like and something bad happens to him and you're like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but that, and you're that, like, that's not a big deal, but that's malice. Yeah. yeah. You guys have any other thoughts or examples? I, I didn't really give any examples of any of these, but do you yeah. have any? Just on the same lines that, yeah, well, that's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah Bad you, karma. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we saw that at 9 11 when they showed the people in the Middle East celebrating that the towers fell and things like that. That's what malice is, is that yeah. you're going, yeah, that's great. Um, I kind of look at anger, wrath, and malice as, as degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, anger, you can be angry okay. within yourself. Yeah. Wrath is when you pour it out. In other words, you go and punch the guy. Yeah. And and malice is then you put after you punch the guy, you wish him evil. You know, and yeah. I hope that hurts for a long time or whatever. Right. You know? right. Yeah. I think there's degrees of, of anger. You can be angry and not do nobody would know, but you can be angry and then pour out your wrath. And then, you know, by doing acting upon it. And then malice is the after effect of. Of, you know, I'm, I I should have done it. I think Edwards was talking about it in the, uh, in the in the trial he was in. You know, it's like, well, I can, you know, I think I'm okay, so I can do whatever I want. You know, so that's that's the malice part of it. Well, aren't we warned somewhere in the Bible to be angry and sin not, or something along that yeah. line? So, yeah. which goes right along with what you're saying, Sean, is, and that's what I was thinking. It was the degrees that we go through, you know, anger is kind of within, you know, you can be angry about stuff. I'm angry about stuff, but you know, the, the wrath, you know, God's wrath, you know, <laughs> you know, poured it out in the earth. And then, and, you know, and like you said, but I think that's true. I think we, we all have things we're angry about and, and I don't think that's wrong. It's when we step over the edge and that we act on, then, then I think then that's when we you know jesus set a good example of that when he came into the temple and they were mm -hmm. making it a den of merchants yeah and thieves so so what is stepping over the line then where where is anger okay and then anger not okay well there's righteous anger in other words okay. you are stepping out to protect a child uh there's righteous anger. You can be angry about something and it be okay because it is injustice or any of those other things. So there is right, righteous anger, which is what Dan was saying, is, is Jesus stepped in there and looked at, what are you guys doing to my father's house? Yeah. You're making it a den of thieves, a den of merchandise. And he just drove them all out. So practically... For yourself, what do you think is the first step of where you step over the line when you're angry? Mm -hmm. I guess this is a leading question. I'll, I'll rephrase. Actually, I'll just I'll just tell you about myself because I know you wanted to know about me. <laughs> <laughs> you let the cat the first, out of the bag. <laughs> that's right. Yep, he's out now. So the the first step for me, at least, where you step over that line is when you bring it out of the mouth. It's when you start saying things you shouldn't say. And that's where, you know, you could be angry and then you like, don't say anything and you think about it and you calm down. And then, and then generally that's okay. But it seems to me, and particularly when we look at this list, it seems really interesting that as like Sean said about the different states of it, it seems to be, you starts angry and then it comes out of the mouth. It's going to turn into wrath and it keeps coming out of the mouth and it's going to turn into to malice and it could physically turn into other things as well but at least to me it seems like it starts with my mouth uh i don't know what do you guys think yeah i was thinking last week about i know gandhi said it and sun tzu said it but uh, you know be careful of your thoughts because your thoughts become your words your words become your actions actions become your legacy or some people actions become your habits habits become your destiny um 
And so, yeah, I agree. You, you can't help what you think, but you can help what you say. And when you start saying it, now you kind of have to do it because you said you're going to do it, right? And so it just starts the whole uh, chain of events. But yeah, I agree, John. Sometimes I get very angry and I want to say and do things. And then I have right. a time to think about it and calm down. And then I'm very grateful that I didn't say all the things that I, I wanted to say and do the things mm -hmm. I wanted. And, and I think we can contrast. I'm sorry, Jake, were you going to say something? Oh, no, no, I was just agreeing. <laughs> okay. I, I think in contrast, what we were talking about with righteous anger, it works kind of the same way, right? Where you're angry and you may think about it and like, no, I got to do something. And you start doing something. But the difference between these two is one you're usually doing something for yourself to make yourself feel better versus two, you're doing something, as Sean mentioned, you know, to protect somebody or you're doing it because, you know, this is the right thing to do. And so there's this, this contrast that happens there where it's like, am I doing this to make myself feel better because I feel like I was wrong? That's usually, at least for me, that's where the, the anger comes from. It's like, man, you disrespected me and, uh, and I got to take care of that versus man you did something that was evil and we got to do something about it those two things uh lead us in different directions but they kind of have the same pathway to them john a lot of times in the heat of the moment we might not know but the holy spirit is a good uh you know a good follow-up kind of comes alongside you either lovingly or convictingly because a lot of us, especially guys, you know, we're driven, I think because of the protective nature in us, there's things maybe in our DNA um, that make us more have a propensity to maybe just go off the lid a little bit more. And also not just the Holy Spirit, but I would say once a loved one comes to you later and shares something about how it affected them, that's kind of an obvious one too. that. Okay. I stepped over the line because we might not know too all the time, um, but We've done it enough, you know, with loved ones that we can kind of maybe have a little bit of a manual, like the steps that at least for us personally, like you guys are all talking about as well, um, what it takes to get us there. And, and I'll point out again, he starts off, Paul starts off with this, mm -hmm. with put off all these things, cast those aside. So I, I think this is interesting because you can find yourself, hey, I'm wrapped up in this anger and Paul's saying, hey, just cast it aside. You don't need to have that. You don't need to continue down that path. And it's, it sounds hard to do. And it probably is hard to do. But comparatively speaking, I think this is easier to do than with the list that we read before, where you've got to put it to death. And it's one of those things where you just got to cast it aside. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one is blasphemy. Oh, what do you think is blasphemy? Ooh, that's a big word there. In uh, in uh, the ESV, it's it says slander. Okay, I like it. Which is really different than blasphemy. Blasphemy is it's, against God, but slander is against any everybody, including God. Yep. Yeah that that was uh, that was actually one of the things that I wrote down was we we tend to think of blasphemy against god although technically it does not mean that it actually means um slander it doesn't have to be necessarily against god so i like that you brought that up sean that's good so it doesn't have to be against god it could be against somebody else so what is slander well people use the slander of uh, god's name all the time okay and I think that's what they're referring to here when you're well, using his name uh, irreverently. Well, I, I think the, there's degree. Once again, we're talking about degrees. I think, you know, blasphemy, you know, I'm just looking it up and it's kind of what I was thinking it was to show your reverence for something. And slander is, I think, to make accusations almost like. So it's kind of taking it to another level where you actually slander somebody, whether it's true or not. You know, you, you actually uh you know more of a blasphemy is more like ah just ignore those guys and a bunch of knuckleheads anyway but uh slander is when you actually come out and stand on the soapbox and start pointing and saying that you're doing this wrong and that you know i think what you know like the like anger and 
and malice and everything else we talked about. Like, I think there's just degrees that that this happens. I think. Yeah, I. Oh, go ahead. Slander. <clears throat> slander is more like an insecure sort of thing that mm -hmm. you want people not to look at you, but to look at somebody else. So mm -hmm. you say, hey, you know how bad so-and-so is doing? And you might be doing the same thing, but you don't want right. people to notice that. But that's, that's right. slander. Now, blasphemy, that's what Jesus was accused of. Jesus was accused of blasphemy. That's what they said. Oh, you're blaspheming God because he was claiming to be God. Blasphemy. To me, blasphemy is like claiming to be something you're not. Trying to pull the wool over people's eyes, so to say. Mm -hmm. But slander is trying to claim somebody else as being something they're not. Mm. That's interesting. the difference between the two to me. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a... that's interesting. Yeah. And, and Jody, I think you're right. It can include... Uh, what you're talking about, you know, that that language that where you're using God's name in, in a way that you shouldn't be. But I don't think it's limited to that. Right. This is if, if we're talking about slander as well, then it is really accusing other people of things they shouldn't be doing or, or accusing them. I guess it's just accusing them. Um, it's interesting because I think that that again this this widens it up a little bit and makes us see that this is and we're going to see something a little bit in a in a, another verse that's going to make it really interesting where it opens it up and shows us that this is against other people. Um, so I don't know where I'm going with this thought. <laughs> It's good though. It, it, this is this is interesting. So, so we talked about anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, which oh, I, I was going to talk about how blasphemy. I, I don't. I was going to mention that we don't gossip as much. I think traditionally, or I should say, the stereotype for men is that we don't gossip as much as women. I don't know that that's necessarily true, but I think that this. Uh, might include that gossiping of other people, talking about other people and accusing them of things they haven't, they haven't, well, I guess it doesn't matter if they've done it or not. You're just accusing other people and bringing up their faults. So um, I don't know. It's Technically, word, I guess, go ahead. The word slander is falsely accusing someone of something and ruining their reputation. As I looked right. it up in the dictionary, it's, it's ruining someone's re reputation. So blasphemy is is also claiming to be something that's untrue. So yeah. the word slander is actually creating um, someone, uh, ruining someone's reputation. Yeah, you know, and and it's and falsely accusing them. And it's not, and that's the important part because gossip can be true. It's just you're spreading it. But slander is something different where it is you're That's falsely right. accusing someone right. to ruin their reputation. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. I was trying to get to that and I could not figure out what I was, my, my train of thought just kept left leaving <laughs> me. And I was like, wait, where was I going? Thank you. Yes. But, but the point is that we don't want to be, we don't want to be anywhere near that. And, and again, Paul's just saying, put that off. Don't, don't do it. You know, um, it's not something that you necessarily, it's going to fight back with you. You don't have to put it to death. You just got to put it off. You just got to stop. And uh, and this also fits in with what Jody was saying, but I lost my train of thought again. Wow. I'm going to have to drink some more tea. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Good morning, March. Good morning, March. Hey, March. We are in Colossians Boom. chapter 3. And uh, we're in verse eight, and we just got through anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Oh, now our, here's our fun one, filthy language. Mm. And, and another way of saying this is obscene language. So put off the filthy language, the obscene language. Um, I find this interesting. Uh, for me personally, uh, that really was the 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 first thing to go for me. 
for me, um, uh, when I was in, I was really young. I was in junior high, and I started using all sorts of bad words. And then uh, there was a point where it's like, uh, no, I'm following Jesus, and then all that just went away, and it was just I just put I just put it off. So for me, that this wasn't an issue, but I, I just find it interesting. I also find it interesting. I remember being in high school, and I knew this guy, and literally every other word that he said was the f word. Literally, it was crazy. And you may know somebody like that, where it's every other word is a bad word. And I mean, that's just how he talks. That's, you know, we, we say, uh, when we're kind of interrupting and letting our brains catch up with what we're speaking. For him, it was, let's say a bad word while I'm trying to get my, my brain catch up what I'm thinking. And it was interesting because when he wanted to say something that was where he wanted to put some punctuation on it, right? He wanted to emphasize something. Well, then instead of saying one bad word, he's got to say three bad words. And it doesn't mean a whole lot when you just are constantly saying, you know, all this profanity. Right. It's, it's like, dude, you're not punctuating anything. It would be more impactful if you just stopped talking that way altogether. But anyways, yeah. I, I remember I remember thinking about that. But the other aspect of this I want to point out is it wasn't just the bad words. It was also the bad jokes, because mm -hmm. although he said a lot of bad words, constantly everything was some type of innuendo everything was he's turning everything around to mean something in some particular way and it was and, and that was part of his filthy language part of his obscenity and that's one of those things in high school people maybe as adults too i don't know people think oh that's cool that's clever you know they've got this yeah. clever wit to them where they can turn things around and um that's the Paul's saying, take, just put that off, right? That filthy language, that obscene language. You guys have any other examples or thought about a filthy language and obscene language? I'd rather not share the examples, John. I don't think <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if this is a test. <laughs> in my I world, know in, go, ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I know that when I was in the Marine Corps and I wasn't saved, um, obscene language was a part of life yeah i mean that's all we did was we would even take a word and put a curse word in the middle of it to emphasize that word or whatever you know it was just it was it was just a way of life um and you're right that was one of the first things that went when i got saved was for some reason people looked at me and go you stop cussing and it's, it was it was like refreshing to them because you have to come up with different words. In other words, your vocabulary increases to be much, much better. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but much, much better didn't seem like it increased. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there was no malice in that laugh, I promise. I was laughing with you. Any, uh, any other thoughts? Yeah, I I have something to say. Um, and part of it is the Holy Spirit convicted me for um, the way that I have been acting lately. And I can see how all these are tied together. I don't think that these lists, this list was put this way. Just like Paul says, put on your armor and each piece of armor is in its place like anger brings rage brings malice brings slander brings dirty language you know if we anger if if we get caught up in our anger we tend to rage which brings malice which brings slander and we do dirty language in all of that and we can't be saved if we're in this sin you know um that's the difference between being in the world and, and having Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Maybe people in the world will struggle more with this, but at least we get that conviction from Jesus when we get caught up in these things before we allow anger to lead us to every other word that's on that list, you know, so. And again, I like what Paul says. He says, put it off. Put it off. Put yeah. off all these things. Yeah. 
So. Which which implies that hey, this is you just need to just uh, cast it aside. Which is interesting again, and I keep pointing this out. It's just very different than the put to death these things, and here it is, cast it aside. <clears throat> yeah. So I will point out that you know if you think that you have to use the filthy language to be funny, and if you mm -hmm. think that you have to use you know the you have to use the innuendo and turn words around and phrases around to be funny, dad jokes are a better way to go. <laughs> That's right. They work every time. Mm -hmm. I think that dad jokes are underappreciated because they actually take some effort and some wit so uh right. <laughs> so i will encourage you if you're near me and you want to sit tell me a dad joke i say bring it on if you need some practice on how to do dad jokes i'm willing that's right i like your sign sean <laughs> that's right i'm willing to i'm willing to work with you if you want to practice if you want to practice on someone i'm willing to i'm take i'll take all your material there you go so uh i'm coming for a lesson john <laughs> <laughs> no i was i was trying to get it the other way around you tell me your dad jokes. oh yeah i got a Just couple don't tell them to me john <laughs> <laughs> I, I like i like this um if you connect it with romans 13 14 where you say you're putting on christ i like how you you can almost take off or put off take off these things and then romans 13 14 says put on christ you know it's kind of like this this robe that you're taking off and putting on, like as mm -hmm. as you're transforming, as you're being sanctified, as you're maturing, you're you're taking off these things and then putting on Christ, um, and it He's the thing that changes you. He's He's the new factor, you know. Yeah. He's the He's the thing that revamps everything. Amen. Yeah, I, I like that too. And and I'll point out also, putting off is. Uh, there's an action involved, right? It doesn't just happen. If you've got this on you and you're wrapped up in it and you don't do anything about it, then it's just going to stay there. You've got to do some action to put it off. You've got to be um, considered about it. You have to think about it. You have to do something. It doesn't just come automatic. But but after a while, it does become automatic because you're just putting it off and then it's cast aside. So it's it's interesting. I like I like this. And co to contrast that with what Mark is saying, um, we get and we'll get to another list. I don't know if we'll get there today, but the another list, um, just a couple of verses down, which is put on. And again, there's this action. You got to put this stuff on. You got to remember to do it and put it on. And all this is tied up to what we talked about a little earlier, which is there's a new, there's an old man and there's a new man. And the old man was a slave to sin and the new man is a slave to Christ. So we got to put off that old sin stuff and put on the Christ. And uh, it, it's, it's a great picture. Yeah. I like right. how it says don't lie to each other. You know, you have to allow the Holy spirit to convict you of those things before yeah. you put on your new nature. Yeah. So let's, that's a perfect segue. Let's read that part. It says, um, where's that? Verse eight, nine, right. no, verse nine. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds. And I think this is interesting. And I want to point this out here. This is cool that Paul says, he doesn't say do not lie. He says, do not lie to one another. And, uh, and I, I think this is an important qualifier, not to get to the idea that, oh, hey, it's okay to lie as long as I'm not lying to one another. It's it, That's not the point. <laughs> the point is the point is that Paul is saying, don't lie to one another. And then he starts talking about how everybody is the same. And the, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because he was in a culture where, you know, women weren't worth as much. And if people, if you were a Roman and somebody else wasn't a Roman citizen, they weren't worth as much. Or if you were a Jew and somebody else was a Gentile, they weren't worth as much, which meant it didn't really matter what you said to them. So, hey, you know, you could say whatever you want to those uh, non-Roman citizens, but when you're talking to the Roman, you got to speak the truth. And Paul is saying this in a different way. He's not saying, don't lie to just other fellow believers. Don't lie to just Christians. He's saying, don't lie to one another. Don't lie to each other. 
because everybody has value. Everybody has the image of God imprinted on them. So the, the, the point that I'm trying to make here is that Paul is doing something anti or counterculture in the sense that he's saying, don't lie to others, even if they are a Jew or a Gentile or a non-Roman citizen, what is he, a barbarian or a Scythian or a slave, don't lie to them either, which is very different than what they would have in their culture. And we might think that, hey, we don't have that in our culture either. But I think to some degree we do. We're like, hey, you could say whatever you want to those people over there because they don't really matter. Um, particularly when it comes to politics, people can be like, hey, you can bring up malice to those other people that are on the other side of the aisle. You can you can uh, do blasphemy to them. That's okay as long as you don't do it to your own group. And Paul's saying, don't do it to anybody. And this is very different. And so I like that qualifier because that qualifier isn't just, if he just said, don't lie, they might have been thinking, okay, I'm not going to lie to this group. But Paul's saying, don't lie to one another. He's broadening it up. It seems to me, John, it's kind of hard to lie <clears throat> to nobody. If you're going to tell a lie, you need somebody to tell it to. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way to get around another person. Ooh. I mean, maybe you can lie to yourself and you, know, you can believe something yourself. But still, mm -hmm, you're yeah. a person. You're lying to somebody. You know, but, but when the rubber meets the road, there's two people who know you're lying. One is you and the other is God. Yeah. Try to explain it to him. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. I like it. I'm trying to. Yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. I'm sure people could work this out, though, if you just said. I'm sure people could work out a way to lie to people without actually lying to someone right I, and i'm not saying i'm not saying you can what i'm saying that somebody might try to figure out a way to justify it and say you know i'm not and, and i think this qualifier kind of gets rid of all of those things i agree with you dad i agree with you but that doesn't mean somebody won't try and i think with this paul is saying don't even try you, you can't don't lie to these other people i don't know I could be totally wrong. You might be right. I don't know how you lie to somebody without, or how to lie without including uh, somebody. Yeah. I think at times people have actually told the truth and nobody believed them. And they sure. thought they were lying, but they were telling the truth. And it's almost yeah. comical. I guess we All can right. the, actually, I mean, I'm not going to get political, but if you've heard the term fake news, it's not that they tell a lie. They just withhold certain parts of the truth, maybe a word here or there. So they can spin the truth into something that's kind of not a lie, but it's kind of not. It's like a half truth, half lie. So I don't know if that's a one way yeah. to do it. I used to do that a lot where I didn't lie. I just didn't tell the whole truth, such as, well, who, who was there? And I'd name a bunch of people, but I might leave a few out. And it was, well, you didn't say she was there. Oh, you know, well, I didn't lie. I never said she wasn't. I just didn't say she was. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that's the way we think, right? If you give us a rule, we're going to try to figure out a way around it. <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's part of what Paul's doing here is he's broadening it up and saying, hey, don't do this to anyone. Um, and, and don't do this to one another. And I like how he says this, but we have this whole list of uh, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language, and and all of these seem like, as you said, Dad, they all seem like they really need to require another person. Mm -hmm. and, and so Paul's saying, don't do that to one another. And then again, just cast that off. You don't have to be that way. You just need to put that away. Yeah. Um, also, also we see. In verse 10, you've put on the new man. Wait, did we get there? Yeah, you have put, verse 9, do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds, in verse 10, and have put on the new man his who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. 
And so, uh, I, I, again, this is great. This is this picture of this old man and this new man. He's saying, stop acting like that old man. Take off all that stuff that looks like the old man because you're not. Now you are a new one. You are a, a new creation. And I like that. Renewed in knowledge according to the image of him. So there's this cool picture of, hey, you as a follower of Jesus have been renewed in knowledge according to who the one who created you. What do you think it means to be renewed in knowledge? You're suddenly aware you're aware of things that you weren't aware of before. Yeah. You're aware that God loves you. Before you, you know, God was just something else. And I think what you're saying, Dad, that's key to understanding who Jesus is, right? And when you realize that Jesus saved you from all of these things, that he had a right to be angry with us, right? He had a right to... Uh, to uh, be have wrath against us and malice against us, but he didn't. He took all of that off and he doesn't. He showed us forgiveness and love instead. There's just this great switch of Paul saying, hey, put on Christ, be like him. You have this new knowledge of who, we, uh, of who Christ is, who God is. So behave like him because now you're supposed to be like him. You're a new creation in him. So I like the, the cool... The cool flip that Paul has here. So before we, we continue on, I want to bring up something else that I thought was interesting. And maybe this isn't 100% true, but it seems to me like this list that Paul is talking about of anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. These all seem to me to be things that come out of our mouth. At least they have the potential to come out of our mouth. And so... Uh, why do you think that the things that come out of our mouth need a whole list? Why couldn't he just said, watch what you say? Instead, he gives a whole list of things that we might say that we shouldn't. Mm. Does Paul need to do that? Do you think he could have just said, watch what you say? I think it's more of, of looking into your heart because some of these anger and uh, malice... Yeah can be done without saying a word. So That's you true. can have anger and you can have malice towards someone. And wrath, I think, is, is an action item. But I really believe that this okay. is all uh, part of the, I think when, when we look at the word renewed, and I think it's, it's the Holy Spirit is pointing these things out to you. Because you have, like Paul says, I didn't know what covetous no, it was until the law pointed it out to me and sometimes we think that we can be angry and it's okay but it's what you do with the anger yeah. and that's really what what he's saying is the holy spirit's going to point those things out because he you know when we get saved he starts pointing out a lot of things in our mm -hmm. life that we have to put off sure. yeah it says in james 5 or James 4, verse 5. So also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts a great things. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is unfortunate, but our mouths get us in a lot of trouble, right? We say things we shouldn't say, and, and maybe it gets us in more trouble than other things that we do. Maybe, maybe not in bigger trouble, but definitely in frequency of trouble, at least who's for me <clears throat> so it's i i think it's important here just to be reminded um that when he's saying put it off part of that includes what you say you just got to change the way you talk um because we're we're like christ and that's one of the cool things is you got to look at the way christ talked right how did christ behave how what did he say and we and we should be putting on the new man which is like him so we should be starting to talk like him and use our mouth in the same way that christ used his mouth which is interesting because jesus sometimes we get this idea that jesus was just this timid old 
maybe not old, timid man who said lots of nice things and good things, but um, but that was it. And if you look through, you can see that he did not just do that, right? There were times that he would call people out on their sin and he would tell them, hey, don't do any more sin, sin no more. Or he would call people out on their hypocrisy. Sometimes he called the Pharisees a brood of vipers. And so um, these are things that we might think of that aren't necessarily nice, but notice that his he's doing all of this. When Jesus says all of these things, he's doing it without the malice and the blasphemy and the filthy language. He's doing it in a righteous way, which kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, where you can be angry and and do have a righteous anger versus be angry and this is selfish anger where you're getting yourself in trouble. And so I just think it's really interesting to point that out and to, and to realize that, hey, we can still be strong men following Christ in his words. It doesn't, this isn't saying you can't be strong in your words or in your actions. It's just saying, don't do it this way. Do it in, in the way of Christ. I think that God calls us to be uh, disciplined, you know, mm -hmm. to not do these things so that uh, our hearts can be aligned with his, you know? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'm just looking at the time. We don't have time to move on to the next one, next section, but <clears throat> let's look at verse 11. This might be a little interesting. It says, um, he says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. What do you think it means when he says Christ is all and in all? Do you think that means uh, every person is Christ? Well, I think it means that when we talk to other people, we're also talking to Christ. And Christ yeah. is listening to us. And okay. You know, so uh, so it's like he's there wherever we well, go he's there he's definitely there but but you know you would speak one way to somebody you really respected and you might speak a whole lot differently to somebody that you didn't respect a lot but if you, i don't know if christ is there you should speak to everybody as you would speak to christ I looked at it like uh, Christ is all means that Christ is the most important thing it is, I guess, reign supreme. Um, and Christ is in all is there is a Jesus in all of us, especially those that believe. He's there in those that believe he's there in those that don't believe he just needs to be let out. Mm. So Christ is in you too. And they are looking at you and they should be able to see the love of Christ in you and in your language and your talk and your actions. You should reflect the love of Christ. Not always okay. easy. Yeah. I think these are the things too, um, in addition to what everybody says. These are things that um, kind of separate us, divide us. So these are the things that kind of you know, social aspects, really, you know, religious observances, you know, um, nationality type of things. Those are some of the things that divide us. And um, once we're in Christ, we're, we have a new um, unity and it's him. He's, he's our unity, you know. So uh, it, it, some of these things might not apply to us specifically, but we see the same aspects in our lives and different things where, you know, some people are in this camp and some people are in this camp, but those are the things that divide us. But Christ is the one that unites all of us. Yeah, I like that. Very well put, March. I mean, you look at this group right here, that Christ is the one thing that I'm sure we all uh, share and have in common. Yeah. And I think like uh, what Jake was saying about having discipline, it's exactly what dan was saying about walking it out is it's not easy to do but that's what sets us apart is we speak differently we act differently you can tell that we're 
different. They know we're Christians by our love and the way we treat each other. Amen. Discipline to do that stuff because it's not automatic. Yeah. And, and again, we talked about putting off. And I think part of this putting off is, you know, if you're wearing a shirt or a cloak or a jacket, that's what, when people look at you, they see that, right? They may not, it might not be who you are, but that's what they see. And you put it off and then they're going to see something different. And so this idea of put that off. So that's not what they see. Put that off. And then we're going to see on the next uh, section, it's going to be put this on instead. So this is what they see. But I like this idea of that's not what they see. I like this idea of it sets us apart. It's it's really interesting. And I'm going to go somewhere really wacky. But in the Old Testament, they had this idea, not this idea, it was a thing, circumcision, right? And that was supposed to be a sign to the people. And to me, I always think that's just so weird. Because how is that assigned to other people? Because you're wearing clothes. It's not like people see that. But but the idea was you were supposed to be different because you were a Jew. You were different than the rest of the world. And they were supposed to see that. And, and it's the same thing here. We're followers of Jesus. They might not necessarily see that we are sealed. They might not necessarily see the Holy Spirit. But they're supposed to see something else. And it's supposed to set us apart. And as March mentioned, this is this is a good list. This would set us apart if we were not uh, filled with anger and wrath and malice and blasphemy and filthy language. People are going to notice that they're going to see that that it, you're not wearing this old man suit anymore. Anyways, I just had this crazy uh, memory of men in black where they got the alien he's got an edgar suit on right so he look he's an alien he looks but he looks like edgar because he's got this suit on and so paul is saying don't be the alien with the human suit on be be the person with the christ suit on it's amazing that you remember edgar's name actually <laughs> it is <laughs> I remember the lady saying, he's wearing an Edgar suit. The dad joke, huh? <laughs> I'm going to have to watch it again. I don't remember that was a good that. one, Don. <laughs> All right. Any last thoughts before we close it up? What's a Scythian? That, that's a good question. What is a Scythian? I don't know. I know I, what a barbarian I read, is. I, I read something about it. It says it's an ancient nomadic and warlike people that invaded the Fertile Crescent in the 7th century BC. Noted for their savagery, they were the most hated and feared of all so-called barbarians. Mm. Mm. So I think it's another form of a barbarian, which maybe you guys don't know, but a barbarian is a non-Greek. It's not it's a, like a it's not guy who wears like goat skins. <laughs> what? It's not a big, like hairy, stinky guy that wears goat skins. Uh, maybe. Well, actually, I mean, I, that might be John. They're the not Baptist. Greek. No, it, it's definitely they're not Greek. So they could I take be. it back. I take it back. I thought <laughs> Celestians were Italians. Scythians <laughs> were Italians. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. According to your definition, we're all barbarians, John. <laughs> that's true. That's uh, uh, that's completely correct. We're also in that list. Uh, we're we're not Greek and we're not Jew. We're not circumcised. Well, I don't know about that part. Yeah, yeah. We fit about most it. of the. That's right. Be be careful a lot about of Italians things. there, Dan. Careful there. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to switch us away from that. 